So, ladies and gentlemen, shalom again from the top of the Golan Heights. We are literally three miles away from Syria. It is peaceful. Actually, we're hoping for some actions, don't we? <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying that is because um, um, I'm up since 1 a.m. And I, unfortunately, I got too many... Um, messages on my phone of people asking me if a war started and so it woke me up because you know i need to know if there's a war here <laughs> and apparently some charlatans some people who supposedly teach bible online they reported that a war started and they reported that um iran is attacking israel and that made me so angry that i couldn't fall asleep again after that one because I know exactly how peaceful it is here. And, and again, if there is one danger right now for all of us is overeating. Amen. And you know that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's very peaceful. But I must agree, on the other side, there is a lot of people that are not that happy. And let me explain what happened. We've been talking about it for the longest time that Iranians infiltrated into Syrian soil and they started recruiting Shiite militias made of Afghans, Pakistanis, Iraqis and other, other people whom they brought in order to be cheap meat basically for, for the cannons and the bullets that are flying all around here. And they basically created their own private army of nearly 20,000 people that will operate on their command. And we have to understand that none of these Afghans, Pakistani or Iraqis, a super duper professional soldier, we're talking about people who actually want better living. They, they've been promised uh, some allowance, they've been promised some piece of land when the war is over. And so they come and they fight here, and the Iranians are sending just the top command. They're sending the officers, they're sending the generals, in order to put together this whole thing. Israel has been watching this process for the last year and a half, and we said to the whole world, we've been telling Vladimir Putin, we've been telling the American administration, we've been telling the Europeans, and we've been telling the Syrian regime, we will not accept Iranian entrenchment here, here in Syria. It's one thing for the Iranians to plot against Israel 1,500 miles away from here, and it's another thing to plot against Israel three miles away from here. And Israel decided, on one hand, we are going to unmask, unveil, and expose the Iranian nuclear program, but on the other hand, it's not going to be that peaceful. Our our fight and our battle against their entrenchment right here is going to be weekly, daily, or maybe hourly, and it's going to be uh, not so nice. <laughs> and Israel, over the past few weeks, targeted Iranian targets right here in Syria. One of the most uh, um, significant attacks took place uh, last week, where we destroyed on the ground some rocket launchers and some probably two to three hundred rockets that the Iranians prepared for some sort of a payback to Israel for what we did to them in the middle of April right after the chemical attack. If you remember, Israel striked the T-4 air base near uh, Palmyra and we destroyed on the ground in one airbase of Syria. We basically destroyed on the ground a, um, a hangar, uh, part of many hangars over there, uh, that the Iranians inside that hangar had the secret program of um, some drones that they uh, were developing. Now, what are we going to do in a few seconds? I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to have all the people moving this way, and we're going to turn the cameras this way, exactly. People can stand behind me. 
because I want you to see Syria behind me and the sun is right now in a place where you can actually see much better. Okay, there's more room for you guys behind me. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, what happened is the following thing. The day after the chemical attack, Israel striked and destroyed the secret program of Iran to develop drones. We, we kind of knew where it is. We kind of knew who operates it. Not only that we destroyed the hangar, but we killed on the ground almost 11 top officers of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Iran vowed to revenge, to avenge, to pay back and they started planning. And from that moment of the American and European strike of three empty buildings, um, we noticed, we noticed a, a, um, uh, a, a, a traffic of illusion um, cargo planes from Tehran all the way to Hama Air Base in the uh, uh, northwestern part of, the, of, of, of Syria. And ladies and gentlemen, we not only noticed that there are too many flights, but we noticed that they are unloading rockets. Some of them are uh, 100 miles, some of them are 200 miles of range. And they prepared an operation carefully that will be, by the way, um, diverting the attention from the Iranians, and they will put the blame on the local Shiite militias that they themselves created. You understand? They create the militia, and then they give the militia rockets, they bring their own officers to help the militia launch the rockets, and then they run away and they say to the world, the militias did that. That's their tactic. And Israel know, uh, realized it is about to come, and last week, Israel striked those rockets on the ground and last night the Israeli government decided to go public and tell the whole world that we know what the Iranians are plotting what they're about to do and we we detect everything and we told the we, we said to the world that the Iranians should be very careful because even though they're trying to turn it as if they're not part of it, we know that they're pulling the strings behind this whole thing. So as of last night, all the news broadcasts in Israel started with an imminent threat from Syria by Iran of launching rockets at Israeli military target in northern Israel. That was how we started the news last night. Now, it's funny because the Israelis were not panicky. We... I mean, everybody watched Big Brother and some other things, and you know, we, we, we don't cancel any, any, any plans. In fact, have you seen any suspicious military activity here? No. Apart from my sound effect on the bus? <laughs> Folks, uh, so many charlatans started going online. Reporting that a war started, reporting that the Israelis are moving, I mean, mobilizing forces. No, no, no. Israel is safe, Israel is secured, and, and we, we, we are purposely came out and said to the world, that's the Iranian plot. So the Iranians will be actually um, embarrassed and they will recalculate their plan. Another important thing that happened last night is that the elections in Lebanon took place throughout the whole day yesterday. And last night it was over. And the Iranians were afraid to sabotage the elections and, and hurt the chances of Hezbollah to win um, majority in the, in the parliament if they kind of did something uh, not too smart here. So they waited. Now... In a few days, President Trump is going to have to decide whether he stays in the deal with Iran or is he pulling out of it. The Iranians are already threatening that America will be very sorry if America will pull out of it. The French are saying there is a chance for war if America will pull out. 
The UN is saying there's a chance for a war if America would pull out. That kind of rhetoric, we, we heard it many times. Ladies and gentlemen, what we see actually is that the Iranians are confused and they're even more so, I would say, they are weaker than ever before. Now, this is the chance, if you ask me, for, to either fix the agreement based on the foreknowledge now that they planned a bomb and put in the new agreement the, 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 the demand for them to evacuate all of their forces from Yemen, from Iraq, from Lebanon, and from Syria, or to nix it, to, to, to completely... Uh, 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 completely um, um, cancel it. The Europeans are invested in billions of dollars in Iran. They they don't want to they don't want to uh, lose that investment. So they are pushing for for an American uh, uh, stay in the deal. Uh, Israel is very very. I think Netanyahu was couldn't be clearer than what he, the way he was a few days ago when he exposed. Um, the holy of holies of the uh, uh, Iranian uh, weapon uh, program, nuclear weapon program. And now comes another layer to the whole mess. And in a few seconds, I will connect all the dots for you biblically. Netanyahu is leaving Israel today. By the way, if there's a war, a prime minister is not leaving the country. <laughs> He's traveling to Nicosia in Cyprus to deal with... Greece and Cyprus on a deal to get Israeli natural gas out of the bottom of the ocean and together have a pipe that will take that gas all the way to Europe. You understand what it means? It means that Russia will have a competition now. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says that the rush, that rush will come there is a hook that will be in the jaw. I'm sorry, not you, but... <laughs> yeah. A hook in the jaw. And the hook is clearly the oil and gas that we found in the Mediterranean. The, by the way, the Russians don't even hide it. They say that that is the major reason why they are right now in Syria. But I also want you to understand that Israel right now is perceived as strong, very sophisticated. There is no country on planet Earth that managed to land its secret agents in the heart of its enemy's capital, go into a warehouse, unlock 12 vaults that are huge, empty them, and smuggle everything outside by land, air, and sea. There's no such thing. And everybody, and by the way, do you remember that... Uh, Two months ago, an Israeli F-16 was shot down above Galilee. Okay, I have news for you. As of yesterday, all the seven Syrian air defense officers that shot down the Israeli F-16, they're now finding out that there are no 72 virgins. <laughs> they're gone. Something happened to them. We're not sure what. But they find out now that maybe there is a 72-year-old virgin or there is maybe, maybe there's nothing. But one thing for sure, their plot to continue and hurt Israel is, is, is met with sophistication. And you have to understand, and I know some of you might be very, you know, you know, sad that we get to that point. But listen, the Bible says, he who keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. If God has to work extra hours to keep Israel. That tells you how much the enemy is trying mm -hmm. day and night. Mm -hmm. That's why he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, have you ever thought about that? Yeah. If God will not sleep in his effort to defend and keep Israel, it's because the enemy is day and night plotting. Now, so we're talking about the Iranian Holy of Holies was penetrated. We're talking about the Iranian air defense system was destroyed right after that. We're talking about, I'm talking about the ones that they put in Syria. We're talking about the Iranian drone 
program was destroyed by Israel. And we're talking about the Iranian missile project that was destroyed as of last week. These are the three layers that the Iranians entrenched themselves in Syria, and Israel is determined not to allow them to do that. Prime Minister Netanyahu was invited as the only world leader by Vladimir Putin to come and be present the day after tomorrow in the military march in Moscow that marks the um, victory of Russia over Nazi Germany. The only world leader that was invited. That tells you a lot about what the Russians think about the Israelis these days. But it also tells you that the Russians summons us because they need to talk to us. Now, there is no war here. It's actually pretty peaceful right now. But I want to tell you something. The dark clouds of war are approaching this region. Not just Iran. Iran will not start a war against Israel all by itself. It cannot do that. It cannot afford that. It might try to hit a target here and there just to say we paid back. But Iran will not start a war. It cannot do that. The Bible, however, tells us that Iran will be part of a war that is going to come upon Israel. And Russia will be the leading force to come and invade, and the Bible is very clear, from the north they are going to come. It's not Egypt from the south. It's not Jordan from the east. It's not any country from the west. It's from the north. And from the north, it's where we are right now. We're in the, one of the northernmost parts of the country. Iranian soldiers are already here. Russian soldiers are already here. Turkish soldiers, by the way, are in Syria as well. This is the preparation of the coalition that Ezekiel the prophet is speaking of. We must understand that all the ingredients, the hook, Rosh, Persia, Gomer and the house of the God, they're all here. They're all in that area. Never before in the history of planet Earth, these countries gathered together. And never before in the history of planet Earth, they were that close to Israel. You must understand we live in unprecedented times like no other generation ever before lived. And to, to whom much is given, much is required. This is now when we move to why is it that we're talking about all of these things. There is no war with Iran right now. But the clouds of the bigger war are already all around us. And what does it mean for all of us? Now, Behold Israel is not a news agency. We're not here to, to talk about the news. You can turn on the TV or read a newspaper. It's not about news. It's about connecting the dots for all of us to understand where are we in the timeline of God, because by the way, just so you know, God wants you to know the times and the seasons. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not know the hour and the minute, but we are to know. The Lord says in Isaiah 46, I am God, there is no other, I am God, there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God declares the end from the beginning and here we are. 90 people from five different countries, from the U.S. and from Canada and from the U.K. and from South Africa and from Germany. <laughs> we've got people from... <laughs> we've got people from so many different countries, ladies and gentlemen. Even, uh, I know there's American here from Panama. Where are you? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Serbia. There you go. Oh, so we have more countries. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, more countries. And all of us here, not only that we feel safe and secure, but we share the same feeling that these times, these days are unlike any other days in the history of, of this country and the history of, of our nations as well. And I want you to know God granted us the, I call it privilege, to live in these days. 
And this is the time for us, the believers, to rise above circumstances and to do that which we need to do. And these are two things. We need A, to be watchmen on the walls and to let the people know what is going to happen. And B, to be the bearers of the good news and to occupy by telling the world, God says enough is enough. Now the time has come for all men everywhere to repent. repent. <laughs> exactly. All people everywhere to repent. And now it's the time for us to more than ever before get our lives right with the Lord and get our priorities reshuffle and reorganize where the um, what I call our father's business should become our main business in our life. And I hope that you understand folks back there, back home that we are here the boots on the ground but we are here not to report news. We're here to tell you that wherever you are around the world, God loves you. He wants to use you. He wants to minister to you. He wants you to be comforted by the fact that He is not only in full control, but these are the last days. And the same way the promises of God are being fulfilled regarding Israel's history, the promises of God are also about to be fulfilled regarding the church. And as Jesus said, I will come back and receive you unto myself. So where I am, you will also be. I have probably about 50 times a day messages online, people telling me that the rapture is not biblical. I want to tell you something, guys. Last time I read my Bible, it's there. Last time I read my Bible, Jesus he himself talked about being the resurrection and the life. He himself said that he is coming to receive us unto himself. So where he is, we will be. He, he said, the Bible says that he will descend and we will ascend and we will meet him halfway in the clouds. And we will never be separated from him anymore. The Bible also says that we are not destined to the wrath of God. And the Bible also says that He is about to come and take us out of the hour of trial that is about to come upon this world. It's not through, but it's out of. And it's not that is here, but it's about to come. So you must read your Bible again. I, I encourage you to read it in Hebrew and Greek and in the original language. And, and just so you understand, without the expectation for His coming to take us, what is it? That, what is the hope that we have? The Bible says the blessed hope that we have is what? The glorious appearance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the hope of the believer. The hope of the believer is not... This is not it. This is an evil world. This is not, that's not the kingdom of God right now. <laughs> We are about to be in the presence of God, to experience what the kingdom of God is. And then we will return with Him to establish His kingdom on this world, in this world and for a thousand years. And even then it's not going to be perfect. It will be perfect only when He will make all things new. New heaven and new earth. But until then, people are sinners and people are plotting, and people want to destroy, and steal, and take, and kill. And Israel, being God's people, and the nation through which He displays and manifests Himself to the rest of the world, is paying the price for the rest of the world. We are at the forefront. We are right there. And, and a mile away from here, we've got people sitting right now, plotting against us. ISIS is five miles away from here. The rebels are on the other side. Hezbollah is over there. The Russian aircrafts 
sometimes you can hear them flying not far from here. Ladies and gentlemen, so much evil not far, far from here. But yet look how peaceful it is here. The hand of God is upon this place. And it's not because we're good. It's because He is faithful. And He wants the same faithfulness that He's showing through Israel, to Israel, in Israel. He wants you to also be comforted by it. So I want to encourage you. What we are seeing in the next few days and weeks as the pulling out of the Iran deal is around the corner. As the American embassy... Look at my Instagram. I just posted the mayor of Jerusalem placing the sign of the U.S. Embassy already. It's going to be open shortly. We are seeing things that we, in our wildest dreams we couldn't see. God is working extra hours as of late. And we are His people. And we need to be encouraged. And we need to not lose hope. And we need to understand that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And I also want to encourage you folks that um, um, all of us here are, are the proof of his faithfulness. Think about it. You came from so many different countries, so many different religions, so many different religious systems, political systems, yet look at us, one in Christ. Amen. And we're standing here on this ground, not because we're tourists. No, because we believe in the Holy One of Israel and in His great plan for us very soon and for this nation and for these people as well. Amen? Amen. So wherever you are around the world, you should share the same hope and the same um, comfort. The Bible says that every time we think of the rapture, we need to comfort one another with these words. The Bible also says that we, even though things are, look how dark they are right now. Even, even though rumors of wars and wars. And by the way, we're expecting 2018 more natural disasters than any other year over the last, I don't know, 2,000 years. And these are things that Christ said will characterize the end. Eruptions of, of, of volcanoes and earthquakes and pestilences. And again, rumors of wars and wars. But yet Israel flourishes. The fig tree is back to life. Here we are in this land. And I want you to, I, I, I want you to understand that um, all of that which is happening right now, is part of a grand plan. If the enemy thinks he's about to destroy Israel, God has a grander plan to save Israel. And all of us witness today something that has never been, se has never been seen before in the history. Israel is back in the land. Jerusalem is back in our hands. And we're watching a, a stage in our history like never before, we're so prosperous. Just today, a company in Israel was purchased by an American company for $7.1 billion. That's, that's after Mobileye was purchased for $15.3 billion last year. You're talking about billions and trillions of dollars of, of business that is generated in a country of, of less than... Uh, nine million people surrounded by people that wants to destroy them every day and every night. There is no logical explanation to our existence. There is no logical explanation to our th the thriving economy that we have. There is no logical explanation to our victory in the wars. There is no logical explanation to how Mossad agents can get to the heart of Tehran, steal the biggest enemy, uh, the biggest secret program of that regime that they were hiding forever and bring it all the way back to Jerusalem. There is no explanation but one. The Lord. God is there. Now you can close your eyes. You can <laughs> decide not to listen, not to see. That's fine. That's up to you. But God is moving. And I said that a couple weeks ago. God is, 
In this world, we see that God is moving in two parallels. There is world events and there is our life. World events, as prophesied by the prophets, will, will take place. I want to so see you stopping the rise of the Antichrist. <laughs> Forget about it. Ain't going to happen. He's going to rise. I want to see you stopping Ezekiel's war. I want to see you stopping uh, um, the, um, the um, war of Armageddon. I want to see you trying to stop the hatred towards Israel. You cannot. God said it will be part of the deal because He knows man's heart. Before those leaders make up their mind, He already knows what they will decide. But the same time we have that, we have another parallel, which is our life. And in our life, he, he allows us to choose. And he says, choose life. Amen. So you and your children shall live. So when you see all these world events, your choice in the parallel line will determine where you will be when those world events are going to take place. And I always tell people, when Jesus will return and His feet will stand on Mount of Olives, as Zechariah 14 says, you really don't want to see Him face to face. You want to see His back. You want to ride the horse behind Him and come with Him rather than see His face coming to judge the unrighteous world. So your decision today will determine your eternity. And God gives you all the ingredients to make the right choice. He gave us scriptures that are being proved every day more accurate than your newspapers, more reliable than the words of your politicians, more authentic than any intelligence uh, community anywhere around the world. He is giving us His word. And His word, heaven and earth will pass. But His word will what? Never pass away. Never pass away. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the Word of God stays forever. So some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. So from the top of the Golan Heights, from where Syria is right over there behind us, and it's so peaceful here and so amazing here, we want to tell all of you that we love you, and that we hope that this message will minister to you, not in the way of answering your political questions or your some curious, uh, curiosity about the situation, but will minister to your spirit and will uplift you in a way that you will be um, happy and glad. You know what Paul said? I pray that I will finish the race with what? With joy. We're not just running. We want to finish the race with joy. I mean, you don't want to be, how are you? Saved by grace. <laughs> no. You want to be, you want the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Amen? Amen. So, um, anyone wants to say hello to some of his relatives? I don't know. Hi. All right. Hi. All right. Hi. All right. Hi. So, from the top of the Golan Heights... Two miles away from Syria. Thank you. God bless you. And I would like to finish this broadcast with the ironic blessing upon all of us here and upon everyone back home. Yevarechecha Adonai Vishmerecha. Yaer Adonai Panavelecha Vichuneka. Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vyasemlecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face towards you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. Shalom. That shalom, that peace that surpasses all understanding that can only come when the Prince of Peace is come, uh, uh, will come. And that is when you put your trust in the Lord of Peace who can give you peace now and everywhere as the last few verses of Second Thessalonians say. So, in the name of Jesus, we pray all of that. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Follow us on Instagram, Behold Israel. 
on Facebook, Behold Israel, on YouTube, Behold Israel, on, on Twitter, Behold Israel, and go to BeholdIsrael.org and subscribe for our weekly newsletter. Thank you, God bless you, and Shalom. Bye-bye. <laughs>